Sweden, a country filled with beautiful people who deeply enjoy meatballs and the birthplace of IKEA. No, 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 that's not the Sweden we're talking about here, boys. We're talking about E4 Sweden. And you did it again, you clicked on one of my videos, and now you're gonna watch me play Sweden with no pants on. So we start off as a junior member of the Danish crown together with the Norwegians. However, unlike our Norwegian brothers over here, we're actually a lot more disappointed loyal let's see if anyone actually supports our independence we got the english and the scots supporting our independence you know what let's actually ask them to support it for us especially since the english has quite a big navy but the english is going to go to war with the french so very likely we're not going to be able to use their navy so instead of that what we're going to do is we're going to get galleys i highly recommend you get around 10 galleys before you start your war you're going to need more money so we're going to go to our estate some of the diet go for whichever agenda best suits you then you can give out the plus one admin and military mana points and you don't have enough mana points to get the third plus one privilege but we can seize lands and then after we can give out the third one we are gonna have huge problems with autonomy so keep that in mind but it is worth it because getting the plus one mana privileges from day one means you're gonna get in the long run a huge amount of extra mana points without even realizing it we're also gonna give out the supremacy over the crown oversight by the clergy and patronage of the arts together with the indebted to the burgers guild loans and the private trade fleet the reason we're doing this is because we're gonna need this money to fight our independence war so because of that we're gonna use it to also recruit more galleys like i was saying before i don't know how many that was just recruit as many galleys as you can you're gonna need these i'm actually gonna cancel the one in stockholm because i'm gonna need to recruit my boyos there avec le hired the free company in stockholm and let's also get a generalen we got no c each pip feels Batman, but it is what it is. And let's merge up our fleets and come over to Stockholm. We're gonna start this war in pretty much one year, which is when our galleys finish building. I also highly recommend that you delete your fort in uh, Elfsborg and in Abo. Both of these are pretty bad forts. They're basically grassland, so easy to take forts. We don't want easy to take. I recommend you develop any province once. I developed Stockholm, but it's your choice, whichever you want to develop. This is gonna make it so you get 0.5. 30 autonomy rather than 0.40 so it gives you less of a debuff from your lack of crownlands until we finish our war at least alternatively you can also develop the province of Dallas Kogan because this is a special province where you have a modifier of plus five local goods produced so you're getting a lot of income from just this one province that's producing a ton of copper what happens almost all the time is the Danes are gonna fight their rebels and they're gonna lose a lot of troops when fighting fighting these rebels after which they're also going to be sieging down the province of Gotland to take it back from the rebels and when they have their army on the province of Gotland that is the best moment to attack them even if you don't have anyone supporting your independence you can 1v1 them when that happens since they basically have no troops actually defending the mainland I also encourage you to get claims on Novgorod whilst you're doing all of this and to get a spy network in the Danish lands so it's going to be faster for us to siege down their fortifications and would you look all of our galleys have finished so let's bring all of them in the same province here and make a big blob of a navy get a general as well for that or admiral and these guys are now in Gotland, so that means that it's going to be very easy for me to just take all of their provinces now especially since i have a lot more ships and i basically have naval domination it's a time for the big varski here england and scotland are joining us so that's going to make it super easy to basically win this war but you really don't even need them i got a 255 leader that is not bad dude that is really not bad let's try and rush for the fortifications and <laughs> let's try and make sure their army don't leave this province because this way they don't even recruit new units so it's super easy now boom just took out six of their ships already let's go over to uh, the main province here and looks like we can take out 2,000 Danes also I'm sieging down the fort in Lund with the free company because they have their own manpower I'm also gonna barrage the fort 
of Lund to take it out a little bit faster. We need this so we can use these units to siege down the rest of uh, the Norwegian lands. Let's use our army to wipe out the Norwegian army now before they do any damage. And uh, we're going to keep a few thousand units to just siege down Norway at the same time. Hello, my friendly Norwegian neighbors. How is the weather in Stockholm? Did you come to visit us or did you come to get Stack and Vapenikum? <laughs> bye bye. Oh, lol. Norway literally just has 1,000 units left. There's these guys here running away, bruh. Also, I have to say it, England and Scotland are the worst allies ever. They literally are not even helping me out a single bit. They're just sitting on their little islands here. And you know what? I'm gonna pay them back for this. And I'm gonna conquer the British Isles as reward for their insolence. And we got the province of Lund, Neuss. Now let's go for Shayland or Scala. I really don't know how you pronounce this, I'll be honest. Let's see if our second general has a siege pip. He does! Oh, that's gonna be of help. Nice. Let's uh, take over Akersush now. The the fact that I have my navy here blockading the Danish navy means that they cannot use their transports to bring the rest of the army from Gotland. And because of that, I have free reign over the entirety of Scandinavia. Sweden has a ton of unique events such as the reforms of Gustavus Adolphus, which gives you until the end of the game either morale of armies and infantry cost reduction, mercenary manpower plus 50% and maintenance cost reduction, or some uh, navy stuff that I'm not interested in. Obviously you want to go for the morale of armies and the infantry cost because you're not going to be using mercenaries that much after the first 50 years or so and the reality is that Sweden is a special nation it starts with 20% infantry combat ability which is insane I mean their infantry units are better than any infantry units at the start of the game and depending on the ideas that you go for they can maintain that awesome strength that no other units have well infantry units I'm talking Talking about here. Sweden is the infantry meta nation. Remember that, guys. So we got the capital and still not enough. We need to get more war scores. So we're gonna have to get the fort in Kolding also. Or actually, if we get the fort in Trondelang, we don't need to take anything else in the mainland of Denmark. Ah, you bastards, you're hiding away in Nordland, aren't you? I was so excited to kill these guys off, but they're like sitting just far enough for me not to reach them. It's like taunting me. And I think we do have enough war score now. Let's see, 89%, which probably translates into 100. First thing, of course, is grant ourselves independence. You cannot take any land until you are an independent nation. So keep that in mind. I'm obviously taking Scani land as well as the capital of the Danes simply because I want to take it and I can. Nothing they can do against me. Some money as well. That's pretty much it in the first war. In the next war, we're basically going to take the rest of Denmark, including Gotland. I would have had to siege down Gotland. would have taken me a long time if I was to do that. It would have been good because I got a mission which requires that I have Gotland to get more permanent claims but I also wanted to finish this really fast so I can attack Novgorod which is a very easy target and they normally get attacked and destroyed by the Muscovites so if I manage to get a few provinces before Muscovy that is a great position to be in. We're gonna delete the fort in Scania obviously and the one in uh, Lund. Now let's bring our boys over to the border with the uh, Novgorodians and let's do the next mission here. Expand Expand Shvidon. We also can do this mission. Naval force limit at least 25. That's easy to do after we core everything and we lower the autonomy as well. Let's get our rivals now. Denmark, obviously. The Livonian Order. And, of course, Novgorod as our third rival. Lower the war exhaustion. You can concentrate this. And you actually get five development back from the lands you concentrated in Scania land. You can do the same thing. You're not going to get five, but it's fine. It's Danish lands. We might as well get rid of them. I'm really doing this because it makes it cheaper for me to core this up afterwards and even though I'm losing a little bit of development it's three development it's totally worth it especially since you lose more admin points otherwise and because of the lands that we took we also went up to six percent crownlands now and we can seize another five percent crownlands in two months it hasn't even been five years since we started our campaign so as you can see having a low crownlands is not a massive issue when you just get it back super fast oh what three six five Five. You know what? For the first time ever, I'm actually getting an air from this event because it's not such a bad air after all. After you get the extra 5% crowns, you're going to get rebels because you're not going to have enough time to uh, increase the loyalty threshold to 50%. So make sure you kill off the rebels before you do any wars because these guys steal your crownlands. Every time they siege a province, they give crownlands to 
whatever estate they represent. So right now they would give the clergy some of the crown lands if they take these provinces. Don't forget to also dissolve the alliance with the Scots since we're going to start getting some claims on uh, the British Isles via the Scottish lands first. After your independence war, you're going to have a lot of available allies. Poland is a great ally most of the times, as is Muscovy. Extremely bad luck. I'm just going to lose my entire mercenary army here. Feels extremely pepe. Oh, no, I can retreat them. All right, let's go back. And what? Hesse just became the emperor. Are you serious? Wow, that's going to change everything in the HRE now. It's going to be so much easier to kill the HRE actually now. If it wasn't for these pesky rebels, I'd already be at war with the Novgorodians. Whenever you get the centralization reforms of Gustav Vasa, make sure you reform, click the first option. It offers until the end of the game monthly autonomy change reduction, which is insanely powerful, especially since we have autonomy problems right now. Come on, boys. We got to get rid of the Rebelski. Be gone, foul Balrog. And you know what? I'm going to disband this free company now, and I'm going to get another free company. Or actually, considering the amount of manpower I have, I don't even need to get another free company. Just get some more regular units. Let's get a loan. Go up to 16 regular units and 4 cavalry, because we already have 6% professionalism for the event that we got before. So we might as well just slacken our professionalism. I'm also getting a temporary alliance with the Muscovites. I will cancel this military alliance after I finish my war with Novgorod and with the Livonians. Oh, you snack do. All right, let's split these guys up in two. Send half in the south, half in the north. They built a fort in Olonets. No way. I've never seen the AI actually build a fort in Olonets as Novgorod before. That is a really good fort location. That's why I'm a bit surprised with it. This always turns into a who can siege the other's capital faster game. So make sure that you have your defensiveness edict enacted in your capital. You should definitely be a lot faster with sieging Novgorod than they are with sieging Stockholm though. There you go. We got it in 182 days. Nice. Now we can just carpet siege the rest of this. I have a little bit of a predicament here. I got the peasants war and a civil war that is about to trigger. There's a reason for that and that's because of my low legitimacy. That happens a lot with Sweden after you get your independence war. If you have a trash leader, what you could do is you could force your main guy to die or abdicate. But my main guy is actually super good so I don't want him to die even though my ear is pretty good too and I still don't want to go through the peasants war so in order to avoid the peasants war I'm gonna waste a lot of my military mana points and I'm gonna get up to 50 legitimacy by strengthening government it is a waste of mana points but we'll catch up with that after the war because we'll have a bit of a chill period after just to make sure our country's back on track there's two realistic outcomes to this war first off if you want to form Russia which you can you can form Russia get the Tsardom and become seriously overpowered, Swedish ideas and Russian Tsardom government reform makes the strongest nation in the game. But we're not going to form Russia today, so I'm not going to take Novgorod City, which obviously you want to go if you're going to form Russia. I got different plans. The most important part is taking Neva in government land and all of these other parts here. So we have beautiful borders with the Russians after they kill Novgorod. I'm taking a lot of money also. And as you can see, coalition just Volgast in Denmark, so literally nobody important. I'm doing this because my economy is absolute trash after all these wars and from having my autonomy ticking up every month, roughly 14 to 18 autonomy in every province. We're gonna lower that but not just yet. We're gonna wait till we get another 5% uh, crownlands in 54. Now we can do the Baltic fleet that gives us permanent claims on the entirety of the Livonian order and by entirely I kind of just mean Estonia and a little bit of uh, Latvia, not really all of it. <laughs> hey, it still counts, okay? Okay. With the money that I took from Novgorod, I paid off my old 1% burger loans and I'm gonna take new burger loans now, which means I got 130 ducat worth of loans so I can pay off the 4% ones, which I have quite a few of, leaving me with only the 1%ers. 0 0.54 interest after expanding like crazy in the first 10 years is insane and is really what makes this country absolutely amazing. Speaking of amazing, let's actually get the crown. Let's oh, forgot I gotta kill the rebels first. Die, ah, yes, come back, dangins. And now the Muscovites also attacking Novgorod. I don't think they can fully annex all of it, but no, they're gonna still have 20% war score, so that means I might be able to take more lands from Novgorod. I believe it is time now to start growing the autonomy everywhere around the country. This is gonna massively boost up our economy. Hot damn, we got one extra ducat just from lowering that autonomy. Ah, yes, what a tough decision, guys. Should we put Stan Sturry A111 as our ruler <laughs> no 
no, we're, we're not gonna do that. Screw him. He is not my king, okay? Not my king. And it looks like it's round two against the Danes and the Norwegians. We can call in the Poles and uh, Brandenburg, actually. But I'm not gonna do it. I don't need them. First step is to crush the Danish navy in the Straits of uh, Den Denmark, I guess? I what, what straits are these guys? Oh, that's right. They're the Straits of Sweden. And, of course, also crush the uh, Norwegian Erme. We don't want no Norwegians around here, sir. I also slack in recruitment a couple of times, so I have enough manpower for this war. And in the process, I even managed to get some decent generals for my troops. Because we also have a lot of mana points, we're gonna be barraging the fort in Kolding so we can finish this war a little bit faster. Fear the might of the Swedish army, you Danish heathens! And oh my god, did I just get a zero and they also got a zero? That's like a double zero and it means we're zero brothers forever. Except we're not because you're gonna be dead ski very soon. Hey, <laughs> good guy Sweden killing off the rebels for the Danish scumbags. I'm such a great guy here. Look at how amazing I am making sure that they're safe and sound from those rebel scumbags. Wait a second, rebel scumbags? Danish scumbags? Are they all scumbags? Byzantine refugees, you say well I don't mind if I do sir that tech cost is gonna come in handy for sure so for the second piece against the Danes I'm gonna go for the island of Gotland so I can do my mission together with Bornholm as well as I'm taking as many provinces from uh, Norway as possible including getting closer to the Iceland parts which means that in the next war we're gonna take what's left of uh, Iceland no coalition at all and if I stayed in this for a little bit longer I probably could take one more province but it's fine I have bigger plans now that this war is over we can start our war against the Livonians since we want some of their lands as well of course definitely delete the fort in uh, Visborg or sorry Visby we can do our mission conquest of Scania next up we need to eat the last two provinces from Norway to get the next mission done and we even have a Swedish new world mission that we can achieve a bit later on the Livonian order only has 10,000 units together with Riga so this should be a cakewalk Vas, the clergy is not happy one to me that is of the sucky sucky. Okay, seriously, I actually got like a lot of rebels because of that event. Oh god! Why didn't that trigger like before I actually declared the war on the Livonians? This is gonna make things a lot more complicated now. Yes, come in Novgorodians. How dare you take my fort like that? I think I'm gonna be barraging this so we take the fort faster. I'm not really happy. Oh, come on, really? Again, rebels? I literally just cleaned the country full of rebels, man. Time to get a few more units because we're gonna need a second army to deal with the rebellions and we've taken Rivul. now let's go to Fiflund that's totally how they pronounce it in uh, Latvian. Uh, I know, because I'm secretly Latvian at heart, okay? Just saying. Also, you don't know Latvian, do you? So how would you know? Yeah, that's right. I know you've been skipping on those Latvian classes. Bro, for real. Do you know the chance of these rebels actually spawning around? Unfreaking believable, man. Let's hope we get a nice siege pip general. Literally everything except siege pips. Directly annex Riga and take all their money as well. Dariagu. Now we can also attack the uh, Livonian army that was hiding away. Oh, what? No, 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 no. Wait, 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 wait. Let them fight the uh, Regan separatists. And I think we have everything we need to piece these boys out now. We basically took the rest of their country, so we can do a full annexatio. Let's see who cares about the uh, Livonians. Nobody. Nobody cares about the Livonians. Now we're going to also concentrate all of these lands here, so it's cheaper for us to core them up after. And we can do the conquest of Livonia, which offers more permanent claims on the northern parts here of the uh, HRE, basically all of the Pomeranian proper lands. So now that I've taken the Livonian lands, I don't really need my alliance with Poland anymore because I really need to take these provinces. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to support the independence of their vassal once truce is over with them. You know, the one time I actually want to attack the Scots and uh, start munching into the British Isles, that's the time when the English and the French do not have this freaking hundred years war. Also, I'm going to do something Thing a lot of people don't agree with but I think it's the smart thing to do I'm gonna be converting all of these uh, three development Finnish provinces to Swedish why am I doing this it's super cheap around 21 diplo points and then after I start playing toll and I increase the development in these provinces I don't need to worry about it being a different culture even though this one is accepted so that shouldn't be an issue in the first place but I am not gonna get separatist rebels and I just like seeing the entirety of my country having 
one color when I go to the culture map mode, okay? That's the real reason here. Especially the Sami provinces are extremely annoying and they keep rebelling. Look at this. I got Sami rebels on the way in 2.1 years. So if there's no Sami provinces, there cannot be any Sami rebels, can they, boys? Oh, wow. Really, Muscovy? You left Novgorod with one province? Huh. Okay. I have a plan, guys. Did you guess the plan yet, sonny -o? Did you guess it yet? I just realized this dude's name is Gustav Adolf. That name is not as popular as it used to be, is it? I wonder why. Even though they're joined in by the Franskis, no problemo. France doesn't have much of a fleet, and this is gonna be more of a naval war than anything else. And boom, the Scots also don't have much of a fleet anymore because I wiped out their fleet. Can we get an F for the Scottish army? By the way, guys, this save is available to all my patrons and channel members. And I was wondering, what should we call this land? Considering everybody calls their country here England, Scotland, Ireland, we should name our part of the British Isles Swedeland. I think that sounds pretty good, doesn't it, guys? Oh, you made a mistake, France, because I have more sh and these boys are gonna get stack wipe now. Auf Widungslung, as they say in Swedish. Seriously, when I wasn't looking, they actually managed to land a massive army onto Scotland. Actually, this is not such a bad thing, because if that many troops are in Scotland, then France probably doesn't have that many left, does it? Say hello to my little Novgorod and to their juicy, and I'm saying juicy claims that we have over here. Hey guys, look at me. I'm on vacation in France, and I brought company. The Grand Company. For real, France's actual entire army is in Scotland. And yes, they unseaged everything that I managed to siege. Feels bad, man, but it's fine. The French sneakily tried to get their troops out of Scotland, but I managed to blockade their entire fleet in the province of Lothian. Wow. The French actually went over their force limit and recruited another 20,000 just so they can actually fight me on the mainland with their army trapped in Scotland. Bruh, for real, this takes dedication right there. All right, well, I could definitely take Paris and go for a little bit more, but I really want to piece them out so I can actually do my war against the uh, Scots. And remember, I was talking about the province of Dallas Kogan. Well, look how overpowered this thing is. If I build a workshop in Dallas Kogan, it gives me 1.35 ducats flat from this one province, and that is just with two production dev. Reality is that this doesn't scale up based on your production. It's a flat modifier because of the plus five good produced essentially it's the equivalent of having 25 production dev in this province because of this particular modifier i think it's also time that we declare another war against the danes to conquer the rest of what's left here i'm gonna call in verdun and luneburg so that they can actually take care of ditmarsh and for me and scotland just committed a massive brain by trapping themselves on this island no more haggis for your boys eh that was like the worst scottish accent i've ever done and i've done quite a few horrible ones. The French still have their army trapped here and they only have one transport so they're transporting their entire army back one by one. <laughs> it should take them a little bit of time. I don't want to be greedy with the war against the Scots and I want to let them keep some stuff so I'm only gonna take a couple of provinces. I think this is a fairly good peace deal right here. Coalition only the English and the Danes oppose me from taking my rightful Swedland claims because remember this is now officially Swedland. Repeat after me, Swedland. I'm fully annexing what's left of Norway as well as taking Denmark proper, let's say, letting them keep less vegan parts for now. And schnapps, we got 112 overextension. I didn't realize this. Oh God, <laughs> I should have waited for a little bit longer before piecing out. I love selling off the crownlands. All of these ducats are going to help out so much because I'm going to be building workshops and barracks to increase the amount of manpower and economy that I have. So with the poles, I'm going to pull a nine head move. I'm only taking a one province, Königsberg itself, also a little bit of money that I can take. I'm doing this to avoid any potential coalition and because now I can release the nation of the Teutons and with the Teutons out, I can feed them up all of their cores in the next war, thus avoiding a huge amount of aggressive expansion. Since we have two vassals, we can also give out these strong duchies. The great part about Sweden is the fact that you have so many options for expansion. You can go into 
into Russia, you can go into Europe, you can go into the British Isles and then into the New World if you want to. And it's a great playing tall nation as well as a great playing wide nation. It really depends on what exactly you want to go for. Hell, you can even go colonial if you want. Also, I'm thinking about getting the Sweden is not overpowered achievement since we're really close to getting it. So if we get 10,000 likes on this video, I will be getting the achievement. And check out this awesome France video until the next time. And I really want to thank all my patrons, channel members and Twitch subscribers for the amazing support you guys have been offering. I really wouldn't be able to maintain this channel without all of your help.